Hello. Mark, are you there? I am here. We gotcha. Man, our phones are busted at the station. We're having a tough time dialing out. It's terrible, oh. dude. Are you, are, are, you call, are you still calling me from the station or you call me from the cell phone? Calling you from the station. We got it to work. Oh, okay. Wait. We, wait. We, we took some bubble gum and why we, are you <laughs> asking, Mark? <laughs> are you detecting something? Well, because I, I I thought this might be a different type of conversation. If oh. Kind of oh, oh no, yeah. an off-air yeah. conversation. Oh uh, right. But we, I, we look, have... I mean, I thought it was you. The, you know, I got a notice on my grinder on my phone, and I thought it might have been you. <laughs> it wasn't so. us. No, <laughs> we just had. We just got off the phone with a very strange little uh, boy named Bobby that's locked in the Magic Springs bathroom right now. It was with, a strange old boy. Don't think that was real, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, bizarre. That's all. That I is can silly. Say. Yeah, yeah, it is silly. So really quick, let's catch yeah. up with Mark. How you been? I've been well. We 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 took oh, oh, we we took oh, okay. last Monday off, so we didn't call you. Oh, okay. I was wondering because I, I actually thought I middle of this week I was going. Wait a minute, did they actually try to call me? And then I was trying to figure out where I was Monday, and I was going. No, I thought I was here. Yeah, we it was so. Memorial Day, so we were all uh, we were all uh, slightly ossified, uh, staring at each other, and and with with great delight and and wondering why we weren't doing the radio show. <laughs> right. <laughs> we knew why. <laughs> we we couldn't drive. <laughs> no, I got. <laughs> so everything's well, though. You've been good the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Ladies, yeah, things have been great. Ladies and folks and gentlemen, this is Mark Sargent. Uh, he is. I, I don't want to introduce you this way, and I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just going to say Mark Sargent is the guy behind the YouTube channel Flat Earth Clues. He was also yeah. featured in a documentary on Netflix called Behind, behind the, the Curve. curve. Yeah, not not beyond the curve. Which I, like be, I, like, I like I like beyond. But it's okay. The curve. I've been I've been working with behind the curve, and I can actually use that now because technically you're not supposed to see anything behind the curve. Even though I know they're trying to use that title in like, well, these people are all behind the curve. Yes, okay. behind the yeah. curve is an educational. But you're using it to say we're actually behind the curve. Curvature of the, the dome force field. Dome, dome. It's not yeah. a force field. Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever. Or is it? We don't know what it is. Or is Nobody it Nobody knows what well, it is. Well, Mark knows, and that's why we're having him on every damn week, so we can figure this out. <laughs> Nobody's tested this force field, man. Okay, so, Mark, last last we spoke, two weeks ago, Mark yeah. uh, followed up the call with a photo of the moon. The moon right. landing. It was a lunar lander, and yep. one of the dudes, or a couple of the dudes, and some gear. I think it's, uh, it's, I, an, a, it, it's, it's an easy enough. It's it's a common shot. It's just uh, Apollo twelve from November nineteen sixty nine, and I show this at some of the public speaking engagements that I do because okay. I, I show people. And, yeah, and it just shows uh, a, a shadow in the background. To, you know, because there was only two guys on the moon in any given one given time. The third guy was up the capsule up above, and that's where they would go up to to, to link up with him, and then they'd go home. And I would, I would tell people in public speaking things, I'd say, okay, how many things do you see wrong with this image? Yes, I want to get into that. So Todd's pu- putting the image up on our, because uh, we, uh, we are streaming live on Facebook right now. What's up? Mm-hmm. Uh, at, uh, what is it, Todd? Facebook.com slash record to K-N-O-W? Oh, at Facebook, it's the record the you re- need to know. The record you need to know about. All right, good. Or record you need to know, whatever, one of yeah. those. But yes, it's, it's, it's up there now, so if our listeners want to look at the photo... Uh, we can. They would have we, to get to it to we, see it. Yeah, well, they'd have to go there. To, we can discuss. So let's discuss. Yeah, yeah, we'll discuss. I mean, I can, I can pretty, I can describe pretty well on radio what we're looking at here. Okay. Because uh, you can see this. Is, this is not a rare image. You can find images like this all over the place, and and the video is not very good. The, which is amazing. The the still shots are extremely you know clear, very very high res. You can zoom in on them and find all sorts of stuff, which we do every day. Okay. So. Where, you want me to like break it down? Yeah, break it down. Okay, so uh, there's like a, there's at least six things wrong with it with this shot. Uh, the first one out, of, we'll just get it out of the way because it's so obvious and it's brought up all the time. And that is, there's no stars whatsoever in the shot, uh, or any shot for that matter, ever, ever, ever. There's, I don't care where this any any images are being taken from, you never see stars in the background. And the, the common science explanation is that, well, it's just an exposure setting. They just make sure when they take the shots that, that the exposure, you know, it's, you're never, ever going to see stars. And it's like, what, you, you wouldn't change the camera setting at least once, you know, in all the hundreds or thousands of shots to do this. But the, the, 
the reasoning why you don't show stars is from a production standpoint, you can understand this like from a, like a movie production standpoint, sure. it's too problematic. Meaning that this shot right here is time and date stamp. And so if, the, if you have the belt of Orion on the, on the horizon there, and it's in the wrong place, again, all it takes is one nerd in his underwear at 3 o'clock in the morning in the middle of Nebraska to find it and be like, yeah, I did the calculations, the Orion should really be behind them. And if it's really, really awful, you're screwed. And nobody wants to go through that. I mean, okay. It'd be, it'd be way too tough. Okay, so that's the so, easy one. So no stars. No stars no is stars. the easy one we're pointing out here. Okay. Yeah, that's the easy one. Another easy one, which, again, common people miss it, is that because we forget so much of the stuff that we learn in, in high school, which is about optics, which is you see this image here, and remember, if there's only one light source, all the shadows are running parallel. They should all run in one direction. And yet, with this shot, we see them running in at least four directions, uh, including the guy, the shadow of the guy that's taking the shot, yep. uh, the, the satellite dish, and the lander, and the, the flag. It. They're all running in four directions. In okay. fact, ju- the only reason this would happen is because one of two reasons. Either they have multiple light sources, which, of course, you know, they didn't bring any <coughs> external light sources to the moon, because that would just be silly. Or the light source is really, really close. Like, I don't know, a movie spotlight that's in a giant sound stage that's only 30 yards behind them. That would do it. So that's why you see the hot spot, which is literally right over the top of the astronaut's head. I got you. I see that. Can I, can I, can I discuss this with you? Yes, absolutely. Where are because, the light sources? Because I am uh, actually, uh, and I've never actually said this on the on the radio show before and in no you did one four years we've done this oh, i'm i'm right. actually in in advertising that's my real job oh perfect uh and uh and and i have to go uh, i'm the creative director for an agency and i have to go um uh, put it back to the moon thing todd put it back to the moon thing we don't it need the moon thing. rainbows flying out of a monkey's butt <laughs> don't do that jason uh i um <laughs> i uh so i have to uh be a part of uh film productions a lot and and uh-huh. photo shoots Okay. And so um, we have to light them. Yep. Uh, but sometimes we go for an effect where we light uh, a, a central figure, let's say, in a scene. Right. Uh, but we want to cast ominous shadows. Sure. So the way we do that is with a singular light source. Believe it or not. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's actually done with, uh, with, with, with the way you place props in a room or a soundstage. Yeah. And then you light them with a singular sound, uh, a light source that's far enough back that it can yeah. hit every object, every vertical object, and cast a shadow out. And yeah. so this photo right here that I'm looking at with the flag shadow going to the left yeah. towards the central light and the satellite shadow going to the right towards the central light is yeah. very um, indicative of what I'm talking about, a more ominous looking photo shoot like imagine like a yep. librarian in a library you want to make her look really cool and scary you would maybe put a coat rack over there and a, a fan over there and then you'd have this um these shadows pointing to a, a central plane oh yeah so yeah ab- that's right so this looks like a singular light source to me oh yeah yeah, I mean, and and look, I mean, the the physics of light scream a singular light source. Well, sing, yeah, singular light source that's in the sun. So how do we explain? Because this looks normal to me. Uh, can't be, cannot be normal. Why not? Can, cannot be because because if the sun is ninety three and wrong again, you can test this. Remember, and this is a moon supposedly with no atmosphere. Uh, you can test this with any sunlit day, and that is the parallel. The, the sun will only cast shadows in one direction because it's 93 million miles away. So, so the flag should be going, everything should be going either to the right or to the left or dead center. Unless the sun be, is directly behind, like the photographer, like it kind of looks like nope, it may be. No, 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 no. If the sun is directly behind them, if it's, 90, if it's that far away, all the shadows are going to be. Seriously, test this yourself. You can do it with a flashlight in a in a dark room. Uh, not that I encourage you guys to do a flashlight in a dark room together. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but if one. you have a flashlight in a dark room that's really really close, you can test this. You can do this all day long. The, if the light source is that far away, you're absolutely right about the singular light source. Yeah. Absolutely, I know. But that particular, <laughs> that particular light source has got to be thirty yards tops behind okay. them. That is a studio light source. Oh, but let's move on to something else. Yeah. Okay. So next, we do the shadows. 
Okay, uh, the next would be the blast crater, and that is everybody knows that the entire moon supposedly is covered with something to the effect of, I don't know, six inches of volcanic ash. For some apparent reason, we, they still won't talk about it. And yet, this particular lander and that nozzle that's, that's right next to the frickin' ash kicked up supposedly 10,000, it generates 10,000 foot-pounds of thrust, and there's no splay pattern. There's no blast pattern. It, you know, that thing should have blown every micron of frickin' ash off there, and that thing should be sitting on rock, and it's not. There's nothing. There, it, it, it's sitting, it's like it was just put there. There's no splay pattern at all. Interesting. That, that was that right. is now that is the most compelling bit of evidence you've you've given me thus far. Well, thank you. Is that, uh... <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 and I mean the, the the ash thing just throws me. There's never any. Uh, and it's ne it's the same way with any other lander they've ever done. It's like, look, if you're landing there with this big rocket motor, you should kick up just tons of dust. In fact, uh, I remember Norman Watt Rockwell did a fantastic because he didn't know this was before the moon missions, and he was showing like what he'd imagined it would be, and it would be this thing landing on rock, and the rock would actually be burned. Yeah. But uh, that, know, but, but, it wouldn't just be the ash, it'd be gone, well, it'd be the splay pattern on rock. Again, but that's, all, but, that, rock. but that's also one man's imagination. Now, let's, 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 let's think back to a few months ago when SpaceX brought those rockets back down. Right. You know, the, the, uh, the, the, the launcher oh, rockets. Yeah, the, bo the booster rockets. The booster yeah, rockets I wrote about back down. Yeah. They, uh, they, they did not cause as much disturbance as you might imagine they would because of the information that you've been fed via movies and 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 the norman rockwells of the world so given a, right you but know, you also have to believe conditions. in that elon musk debacle which i i literally wrote about that i think i wrote four or five pages on that thing today but really? let's, let's, we'll get into that another time i mean in fact maybe maybe next week we'll talk about the elon musk thing oh, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm making a okay. note I'm making a note right now. You know, I can, I can just, I can bury that thing. It is, it is so. It, it was how, basically the Elon Musk thing was how to fake space on the cheap. Can you do it? And the answer <laughs> is, it, you can't, you can't do it. It's, it, there's too many problems. Okay, uh, what, another thing would be the thing, giant thing in the middle of that image, which is the satellite dish. Yeah. Which is, if you remember, this is a VHF transmitter with 1969 technology the the wattage we, we and they've given us all the specs on this thing on how far it can transmit on, on, on here you know on on the ground here and the, the the range of this thing should only be about 50 miles not not just because of the dish because they don't literally have enough power to transmit i mean you guys work at a radio station you know how difficult it is to transmit sure and you think well you know oh they're they're in a they're in a uh, a vacuum environment maybe they can transmit further it's like no 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 it's a huge stretch to go from a 50 mile transmission range for this vhf transmitter to a quarter of a million miles and remember they're also transmitting 10 remember this is back in the exactly. day exactly 10, ten right. frames of, what sorry go ahead no go ahead no you're no are you saying Todd, they're, they're in a vacuum in a, yeah well, pretty much they're in a vacuum, but they have to go through two, uh, a quarter million miles and then go through the Earth's atmosphere and have pinpoint accuracy to go straight to Houston. And there was never any, you know, this, this thing's off by a freaking millimeter. You're going to lose, you're going to lose signal, and yet it's broadcasting perfectly, ten frames of se per second of video and full audio. Well, right. And and two way communication on top of it. It was just, oh my god, it was so mind blowing. So not only this thing. It's just, sorry, it cannot do it. It's physically impossible. Fit, well, techno but te te on technologically television. impossible. Technologically impossible. At, at the time or just all, all the time? All the time. There is because, no way, even if you, be mostly because of the power. Okay, but Mark, but how do, our, how do our cell phones work, man? We have repeating towers all over the place. Okay. And, and they're, they're quite, they're all over the place. But like they they have to go to space, and then travel back down. <laughs> oh wait, there's no, no, no actually, there's no GLONASS or actually, GPS. Actually, so. they don't. I I've talked to cell phone guys that say that every time they try to triangulate with space, that that they always always tell the rookies it's like no, you just triangulate with the other towers. You never have to worry about satellites. And all the rookies just say, okay, well, as long as it works, we'll just move on to the next one. Nobody's nobody's syncing up with with uh, now when you deal with sat phones. Maybe, just maybe. But at that at that point, you're dealing probably with the high altitude balloon project, which NASA admits to, and you can watch videos on this all day long. NASA can launch satellite balloons now 
that have a payload of something like four tons. It's ridiculous. It's like, okay, so why would you ever put a satellite on a rocket at all if you can put it up on a balloon for pennies on the dollar? Yeah. Why? Yeah. So, so if those balloons are floating around inside the force field, what do they do? Right. Like bounce off of it or like stay close no, to they, it? No, they don't get up high enough. You can Remember, most of the balloons are hovering, uh, you know, between 100 and 150,000 feet. So you don't have, I mean, and the do- this place, we're talking about something that's hundreds of miles up, and 150,000 feet is only 28 miles, 30 miles top. Yeah, so I, that's I way, that. way more room than you need. And they've been doing this since the 50s. And in fact, I talked to a guy, I talked to a guy on, um, I was debating a, a physicist on Australian television just uh, a week and a half ago. And he had to, and I, and he asked me, "How are we talking?" And I said, "Well, you know, the high altitude uh, balloon research program." He goes, "Oh yeah, I know, I work on it." And it's like, why? Why would you admit this to me? <laughs> <laughs> you're working on wow. it. I mean, it's not, it's not a big secret. I mean, they, they have videos out there. In fact, the, they have spectacular crashes because when they launch these four ton things, you know, that's the size of multiple cars. Yeah. You know, and they blow sideways. They, they just crush things in their path if the winds too strong. Okay, so so moving so, on, a satellite is an issue. What else? Satellite is an issue. Uh, of course, my 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 favorite <laughs> is of course the spacesuit, which is uh, you know the the guy in the distance is wearing, and that is the spacesuit should not act like it is acting right now. Meaning, uh, law of thermal thermodynamics. I'm not going to make it hard for you. Which is pressure needs a container. Plain and simple. Everything from a can of hairspray to a basketball. Okay, and a basketball is just a series of layers. <laughs> So why doesn't the spacesuit do exactly what a basketball does? Meaning you put a little air in the, in the basketball, it goes completely rigid, you cannot burst it, you cannot fold it, you cannot roll it up. It is a basketball shape, period. How, and there's nothing, oh, no, how sorry. can you see that? Or what are you expecting in that photo? That It's a, oh, pre- uh, a pretty high-res photo he sent. The, the, any astronauts walking around shouldn't well, have any articulation points. He shouldn't be able to bend anything. He shouldn't be able to move. He should oh, be he should just be stuck in a... Yes. It, yeah, I mean, if, if you blew up, it, it'd be like a parade float. Like the, little, is, like the little kid in a Christmas story when he falls down yeah, and he can't it's get like up. A, he's standing straight up. He can't bend. I see. Yeah, yeah. It cannot act the way it is. And, and I knew... I, it was really... I, I got to tell you, when they decided to do this, if you watch the early footage of when NASA was experimenting with spacesuits, they yeah. knew this. And they were working with plastic and metals, and it looked like a freaking B-movie 50s robot walking around. And they're going, yeah, this is never going to work. Because even if you could get them to walk around, they're never going to go up and down a ladder. The, the ship would have to be ten times the size just to account for this thing. And so somebody came up with a brilliant idea, and I'm sure he's long dead now, which is, you know what, let's just go with a soft suit, a fabric suit. Nobody knows anything about physics anyway. We'll just film it. They'll buy it. Nobody will question it. And, and even the nerds will be like, well, it's on television. It must be legit. And that's what they did. It was brilliant. I mean, these guys are running around in suits. People, I mean, look at the things that you don't see when they're running around on the moon. They fall over all the time and land on rocks. Nobody checks their suit for any leaks. Nobody ever talks about oxygen. When's the last transmission you ever heard? They said, oh, yeah, Buzz, I think Apollo we only 13. got 15 minutes of air left. That never happens. Okay. And on- I'm sorry, one, one more thing i got to throw in there, yeah, which yeah. is nobody's ever afraid of anything. That's the part that just blows me away. I don't care if they're the right stuff and they're American heroes and they're military. <laughs> you land on the frickin' moon and you look back at Earth, you, it's a very sobering thing, I would think. And, and the first thing you would be like, okay. Well, don't you, don't, <laughs> but don't you think that maybe these guys were a little like blown away I mean, when they got yeah. there and we just, we just saw the highlight reel? No, 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 supposedly it was live transmission. They never talk. I mean, what, why, why didn't they ever, like, all you would care about is getting home alive. All you care about is not dying. And these guys treated it like it was a freaking party. Oh, let's play golf. Let's no, no, golf. there was a movie about that. But Armstrong oh, and percent. Aldrin, that, yeah. that was like two missions before that. There, so there were six missions. There were six missions in three years. Yes. Yeah. So was cra- and those are the ones that landed. That them, Not to mention Apollo. I mean, remember it started with Apollo 8. Apollo 9 supposedly didn't do anything. Apollo 13, of course, didn't land. But the rest of them landed. And, and again, it, it's a miracle of modern technology. Even today, it's like six missions in three years. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody got cancer. There's five of them still walking around today. They never had an accident with their suit. 
Uh, even Apollo 13, everyone made it out alive. At least uh, two saw aliens or whatnot, so there's that. Yeah, what do we think? What, what, so I don't want to get off the picture just yet unless we're done. Are we done with the picture? or? Oh, we can be done with the picture, sure. Is there more stuff, though? No, no, I mean, that, those are the big points. Those I mean, the big points. There's only so much in the, in the shot. Is, Other is, than, of is course, the, they, had, they hadn't put the flag up yet, which was weird. You know, the flag's draped down here. They didn't even do the rigid part with it. You know, didn't make it to where it was literally flying, which is odd. You'd think that flag would be up by now, but whatever. Yeah, well, you would think in a non-gravity environment that the flag wouldn't even droop like that, right? Right. Is that the point? Right. Or or is there okay. is there enough gravitational pull within the center of the... Uh, the, moon? The, the moon to pull that soft cloth down enough. Well, the, well okay. I'll, let's throw one more thing out there. Go you know back what? To here's, the here's one more thing. By the way, the car isn't in this one. Apparently, they didn't have the car in Apollo 12, but I don't care. Uh, and that is what you were just saying. Supposedly, again, if you believe them, the, the gravity is uh, one sixth that of Earth. So, a 180 pound man would weigh 30 pounds. So, and but if you see that flag, and if you think about like you know, because obviously we see the uh, you know the 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 orange orangutan in DC on TV all the time, and he has right. flags draped behind him, and they're very they're very uh, they're very draped down, and you can kind of see that this flag is very soft. I mean, it's not it's not uh, it's not hanging down with the sort of force that you see in the, on the flags on TV. So it is. I mean, maybe it is the gravi- gravitational pull of the of the moon that's bringing it down. <laughs> maybe, although I firmly believe, and hey, we can go to something else. I don't know, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just you know me. I'm a skeptic, and I'm just learning. No, 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 You're teaching okay. me. I want to go back. No, no, it's all right. You just got to understand from a per- in, from a production standpoint. This is everything I would expect when you hand it over the still shots to, Stanley to a, mag- a magazine company. Yeah, so, that is make the shots iconic, make them pretty. And then the magazine people, they don't know anything about physics. <laughs> like, all right, we're going to light it this way. We're going to shoot it from this way. And remember, there was no viewfinder on the freaking camera. Actually, you know what? I've been, so- I, I've been in advertising for over 20 years now, and uh, magazine companies can't do anything with a photo. It would have it oh. come straight from my office. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that is the truth. Hey, wait, wait one, one more little thing before you go move on. And some minor thing, but yeah. that is, if there was no viewfinder on the camera then why does it look like the shadow is of a guy that's holding up a camera to his face? I thought Wait, that was kind of odd. He's, t- he's taking a picture, though. No, 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 the camera did not have a viewfinder. There was nothing to look through. But so is, he, is he looking is through he... something, or is he just bent down, and he's kind of leaning in, and he's pressing the button? Hey, I don't know. It looks to me like he's holding it up, but whatever. That's minor. I don't care. The okay. shadow's the blast crater and everything else. But, you know, do it for me. The blast crater is definitely. Uh, but, and by the way, one, I'm sorry. One last thing, and that is, if you get a chance on a decent monitor, zoom in on the freaking capsule and tell me that doesn't look like a homeless tweaker's shelter. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a creative uh, tweaker. Go for that. With curtain rods and foil. <laughs> I, can't, I mean, I can't argue thing. with that one. <laughs> oh. it, it actually kind of oh. looks uh, like that capsule from the Explorers, that movie from the '80s. The explorers. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. uh, so really quickly, why are the other planets round? Who said they were round? I don't know. They look round, don't they? Well, they they also look round. If uh, I'm going to use the planetarium excuse, they look round if you're in a planetarium. Oh I, I wait, totally no, that's true. They're discs. Which is, or... look, I, I've had amateur astronomers yeah. say, "Look, I can see the moons of Jupiter through my telescope," and I go, "Fine, take a pair of binoculars, go to a planetarium." Look up at Jupiter. Does it look more or less spherical? And they go, well, that's not the point. You're in a, you're in a building. And I go, actually, that is my point. I'm so, saying that you're in a building, which is inside a much, much bigger building. And when you walk out of one, you're just walking into another. I mean, just because you can see something on the ceiling doesn't mean you can land on it. Okay, I got you. Interesting. Yeah. So they could, yeah. be, they could be discs, and we just... Or they could be just wonderful projections on, what are we up to, 8K now of resolution? On million K monitors. But that's a uh, no. That's that's food for thought. Like those things that we see that are round, we think they're round. Those are other discs that are pointed at us with those Ooh. those domes. Yeah, with little plates. So, which makes you think that the uh, dimensions are really effed up. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Like they're very far away. So we're, I need to I, rethink everything. So how does this? And, and maybe you covered this earlier, and and I was too excited. 
uh, <laughs> to pay attention because I actually okay. had because I, I had the Mark Sargent on my radio show, oh, so I was very whatever. excited. Whatever I know, whatever. Hey, I'm. Hey, what, what 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 can I say? I'm, I'm easily entertained. <laughs> uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to mention that to my my assistant. Anyway, go ahead. What is the deal with the earth, with 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 the with the sun and the moon? Like, how is this working? How are they going around us, man? How is this happening? And okay, so the sun and the moon are no, they on I, a big coat hanger or something? I mean, come on. Well, what what are they suspended by? I mean, come on. If if whoever built this is if they're really as old and as powerful as we think they are, Sumerians. then they're using some sort of unified field system to to suspend everything. But we're talking about a sun and the moon that are less than fifty miles wide. In fact, they're probably the identical size, you know, because of the whole eclipse thing. And they're gen one's an incandescent light bulb, for the lack of a better term, and one is an L, a cool LED bulb. And they're traveling around in a giant circular pattern over it's like a like a mobile above a child's crib but it also doesn't take the same path every day so it'd be like a need you know like a needle on a record player vinyl if you guys remember vinyl where uh the, we, when, we, we play vinyl song, all the time oh well, there you go never heard so of it the, um, the as the song goes the needle n- the needle never takes the same path twice it moves in or if you reverse it it goes out yeah so that's what, and and they're so and we're talking about objects that are so small because like well why doesn't the sun light up everything all the time why are we even have time zones why isn't it always daylight and I go well because you're breathing in just a thin version of water you remember we're if water is H two O we're breathing in N four O it's it's eighty percent nitrogen which we're which we're bringing we're breathing in and it is does get thicker over distance and if you think that that's a stretch it's like no 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 think about if you're if you've ever gone scuba diving or even you know watched under sea vehicles. The sun disappears at less than 200 feet down. You can't. The sun cannot penetrate any further than that. And it's like, and it's like, well, okay, well, this is just a thinner version of that. So okay. as the sun goes off into the distance, it's just getting weaker because it has to punch through more and more atmosphere. Interesting. All right. Hmm. The, well, well, how are they suspended in the sky? I'll take your pick. I, I, take your take pick, your but, pick. But, but wait a minute, Mark. I mean, we're talking about we're, we're looking, talking about, you about for answers, man. Yeah, we're talking about I, I, arguing I, I, with what with with, with, you, with what people believe are complete and total scientific fact uh, and theories by what and this is not these are not my words by what others might call you a, a an anti science dingbat. Uh, so we don't want to go with we don't want to go with take your pick. We want to go oh, with okay, okay. facts. No, if, I, if I was going to build it, knowing what I know about technology, and granted, you know, I'll, I'll pick I'll pick from science fiction as well because Star Trek tend to tends to pick you know tell the future anyway, <laughs> which would be uh, some sort of unified field engine that would hold it up. So by that I mean a uh, unified field, which is something our military scientists have been looking for ever since Einstein. If you have any doubt of that, look up the, the movie, the, uh, the Philadelphia Experiment, which is kind of a weak version of it. And that is the relationship between electromagnetic waves and gravitational waves. If you could perfect the relationship, the formula, the equation, and you had the right type of fuel, you could generate what we know as force fields, you know, actual suspended force fields which means you could lift just about any object you wanted and suspend it and move it at just about any velocity and any uh, um, starting velocity, like 0 to 60 and, like, nothing. Who's doing, uh, who's doing this? The, take, you have a choice. The uh, and I'm, Targzitians? I'm gonna, I mean, who's doing this, man? Oh, no, no, no you, have a, you have a choice <laughs> because I, I don't want to offend any, I don't know how many uh, Christian listeners you have. Uh, which is, it's either one of two things. It's either an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves, or the divine. But then you're kind of splitting hairs, because one man's advanced tech is another man's deity. Okay. Uh, I mean, honestly, if a golden spaceship landed in the middle of hot springs tomorrow, uh, you know, there would be, you would have a new religion form almost instantly. You'd also have a bunch of nerds standing by taking pictures. Okay. <laughs> so... It's it's one of those two things, it, but I know this. It's not us. I okay. know that if we we have nothing to do with it. We we are this thing is far far beyond us. In fact, let me use the line real quick from the movie movie reference uh, Contact, which it was one of the most humbling lines ever when Jodie Foster asked, you know, did you build it? And you know when she asked the alien that looks like her father, and he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. <laughs> you know, it was here when we got here. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. Jason, do you have any questions? Uh, no. No, none? None. All right. 
Hey, by the by the way, real quick, because before I email you, uh, <clears throat> the audio on this, uh, it, it, you ca- you guys came in kind of quiet on my side, so you're probably going to have to send me what audio you have if you record it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can do that. We can do that I'll, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be almost positive that you're going to be coming in too quiet for my recording. Really? So I, I, uh, I had to boost you up by about 70% when you called. Yeah, our our phones are jacked up, man. Oh, no I got to get them fixed. It's not my problem, but I got to tell I got to tell the station engineer to fix the phones. Okay, we're the only we're the only show that people actually call into or we call out. So, nice. yeah, it's a pathi- right. it's a pathetic radio station that uh, no one listens to except for our show, and we get lots <laughs> of listeners. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just having fun. Hey, Mark. Uh, as always, it's been fantastic talking with you, catching up getting our yep. flat earth update and i promise as soon as i get my computer fixed i'm gonna have a theme song for you and it's gonna be magnificent and we're gonna make this a regular it's gonna Monday be magnificent. Night thing. yes yes right on next time we'll 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 see if we can bust up the whole elon musk spacex thing i i i, I put a note in my little show notes notebook and it's 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 on it's on the topic list why? for next week why are we gonna do that because we we want to know we want to oh, know okay we want to know what the Sarge thinks. Did you not oh, buy yeah, yeah. one no, of his... I, I will tear it apart. You will not believe it by the time I'm done with it. Hey, Mark, I can't wait. <laughs> Mark, did you not buy <laughs> one of those flamethrowers? No, he didn't buy a flamethrower. I guarantee no, no. it. Dude, dude I got it. two of them. They're awesome, dude. You need what, one of them. That's the only thing he ever... In fact, he didn't design it. That's the only thing he ever released that had any any merit whatsoever. Well, Noah's cars, the, the cars are pretty He'd, awesome. Oh, don't... Oh, see, we can't, we, we can't start on this. No, dude. <laughs> if, you've ever drove one, if you've ever drove one of those in insane I'm mode... Not, I'm, not, I'm not saying... I am not saying that it, Tesla is not a good car. I'm saying he has nothing to do with it. He just bought Tesla. Oh. Uh, Okay. Yeah. No. I. Okay. Mm, all right. That is like Mark Cuban. That's, that's uh, pretty much. That's, that's America, isn't it? Todd's getting. Todd's getting. Todd's things getting. Things that aren't yours. Todd's getting sleepy. It's it's past his bedtime. We got to get out of here. Right. <laughs> hey, Mark. No, we don't. Mark, thank you so much again. Uh, you have been listening to KUHS one hundred two point five FM. The record you need to know about. Uh, look us up at the record you need to know about dot com. We've been talking with the wonderful and magnificent Mark Sargent. Yeah, of Flat Earth Clues. Uh, I'm sure you know who he is. He's on YouTube. He's got a million and a half more listeners than we do. So uh, <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you next week, dude. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. There he goes.